over here. So excited. Who are we going to go see first, Michael? Well, after the big announcement yesterday, I think it has to be Panasonic. It does. Let's not wait. Let's go. Right, let's go. So after all of that excitement, uh, we're a little bit early. Um, and uh, the show doesn't actually open to um, anyone but uh, stand owners until 10. So yeah, we now have to go and join a queue for about 20 minutes. Okay, so here we are at the Panasonic area. Um, over my shoulder, I have got eyes on the full frame cameras that they announced yesterday. And over behind me, um, the micro four thirds lens as well. So that is going to be really exciting to take a look at. But the great thing about Photokina and the great thing about this stand is that they literally have all of their stuff with them. So I'm going to go on a bit of a Panasonic binge and just take a look at all the bits that I don't necessarily get to see every day. are the new 35mm full frame cameras. Cool. This is the S1R on the right and the S1 on the left. The S1R is our 47 megapixel version and the 1 is a 24 megapixel. Mm, nice. The 47 is really designed around the absolute high-end stills photographer who needs that megapixel count, commercial photographers, um, portrait photographers, studio work, that sort of thing. The 24 megapixel is designed much more around the working photographer, the sports photographer, wedding, but also videographers. Both of these are, have the world's first 4K, 50 and 60p nice. in camera. And that's yeah. just, uh, so 4K, 60p, and then um, we also have the world's first dual IS on a, on a full frame camera. So that makes them really so usable. Yeah. They're going to be such usable cameras and that's something that I just think is amazing. S1R, so this is the 47 megapixel version and it's got on it the prototype lens for the 24105. Um, lots might change about this yet. There's lots that's not finished. As There's always. lots that you're not that, that that's not that's not the final version and might tweak. Is that if you put your hand around there, you'll see that it's they've they've worked on this layout. So although it's obviously a bigger camera, it's still easily the, reachable. All the everything's under your thumb and mm. finger, very very simply. And you can see oh, that nice. that is SD and XQD. So we've got. Two Wicked. different card formats there, and you've got the ability to use either. So the screen on the back is a tilting screen. So it comes up this way, in much the same way as we have with our um, with our current, and then it, it comes this uh, way. Oh, wicked! To do portrait. Nice. I like so, that. Yeah, mm. yeah, and it stays all within the body of the of the camera, and I quite like that because it means that if not that you're ever going to be doing incredibly subtle work, but it means it's not it's protected. Yeah. And if you're doing portrait, you've got it straight away. Mm. So weather sealed, um, and they said yesterday that it was going to be really quite strongly sealed for really low temperatures. So we're anticipating that it will be able to be used in really, really quite bad conditions. It's a working pro camera. First impressions are, it is exciting. It feels nice, like I've already said, it's nice to hold. It's not as heavy as some of the newer cameras yeah. I've picked up already. Yeah. So from my point of view, actually, it's quite workable, quite usable. Button layout, nice. And I, I love the LCD screen. Yeah. I love the tilt screen.
So we've come here to the Canon stand and I have bumped into my good friend who you may recognize from many of our Canon release videos. Dave, hey, you right? How are you? I'm, I'm well, good. <laughs> yeah, so I finally got it. Got it out of your hands. Yes. The EOS R. Here I'm it is. so happy. Yeah, so we're, we're so excited to you know, let people finally see this camera. Um, mm. A lot of people have been asking uh, for this from us for mm. a long time. So it's great to you know get the feedback and see what people think of it. It's just, I, I've only had it in my hands for like a minute and I'm just, I'm just yep, yeah, nope, I like it. It's nice. Yeah, good job. Yeah, I'm just really excited from the videography point of view. Um, just taking some of those really strong kind of video features already and putting them in the mirrorless body. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. I'm really excited. Um, so Lizzie got to go to the event um, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I didn't. So this is actually my first kind of look at the camera as well. Uh, so what's my, what should I really be looking forward to on this? Well, really, the lovely thing about it, the viewfinder is absolutely beautiful. It's really, really high resolution, really, really nice. Um, really does have a, um, a lovely um, a lovely look and feel to it. Um, the AF is incredibly fast. Dual pixel CMOS AF on here, so our fastest AF system. It's actually the best dual pixel CMOS yeah, AF Yeah, I mean, I got. love dual pixel anyway. Yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. fantastic. Um, so that is really, really nice on there. You've got the proper variable angle screen, so you can flip the screen right out um, <coughs> and through 180 degrees, which is really, really nice. It's busy here on the stand, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We are kind of standing in the middle, middle of the main fun affair as well. Yeah, never mind. Um, it is good. I'm loving the, the new sort of ergonomics on it. Like, it looks completely different to any Canon I've ever seen, but it still feels like a Canon. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, that's, that's kind of the beauty of it. The buttons. The buttons are very similar to other cameras that we have in our lineup. Um, so they are, if you, if you pick this camera up, you could instantly feel comfortable with it. The battery we've kept the same as well, so the LP6. So if you use uh, any of our other EOS cameras, um, or you know, the ATD and above, um, you can actually use the same batteries in here. But what I'm really excited about are the lenses. The lenses that we can do with this now, this new system, this new R system, are amazing. So we've got the 24 and 105, yep. we've got the 50 mil as well. The 50 mil is a big lens, mm. but this is showing you what the optics are capable of. Yeah. And then we've got the 35 mil, and then we've got the, my favorite, which is the 28 to 70 F2. Uh, that is a sensational lens to use, really, really nice. But because we've got this new, you know, flashback distance and this new lens mount, it basically means that we create lenses that we couldn't create before. And this is what's really exciting. Yeah, just I'm not that's... sure that you're listening to me. You're just I... playing with your camera. <laughs> I am listening. Hang on, your I'm camera, listening. my camera. <laughs> my camera. It's on video, guys. Let's go. <laughs> no. So I'm going to get that back to you. Thank um, you, sir. We'll hopefully pop back and see you a little bit. Uh, Absolutely. You're a very busy man. I'm taking a bit of time. Thank no you problem. so much. No problem. Uh, and have a good foot, Kenny. Yep. See you soon. Thank you. Stand and I have found James who hopefully is going to show us what was announced last week in the form of the 24mm lens. So this is the 24mm G Master. Um, it's got a lot of the, the usual attributes that you'd find on the G Master range. So we've got the manual control aperture ring cool. with the click on and click off. So if you're shooting for video, you can turn that off and have a nice smooth movement on the aperture ring. Nice. Um, we've got our focus hold button, which is totally customizable for things like IAF. Really, really nice uh, to be able to put the IAF feature on there. Um, and yeah, it's it's something that was missing from the lineup before. We didn't have anything wider than the 28 f2. So 24-14 now. Beautiful lens for wedding photography. Um, really, really good for um, astrophotography actually um, and landscape. So there's uh, a lot of attention has been put onto the lens coatings and stuff to make sure that stars actually appear as stars rather nice. than kind of weird flared objects. Yeah, wicked. Um, so yeah, really excited to try and get this in the hands of some of our ambassadors to go and put it through its paces. Particularly in, we're working with guys out in um, uh, Iceland at the moment, capturing the, uh, the aurora. So really, really keen to get it in their hands. So. Yes. You've got a really loud stand. So yes. what's going on? We've got what some crazy, uh, crazy samurai guys over here. We've got a lot of um, what we're trying to show is obviously fast moving stuff and yeah. really showcase our autofocus system. So the IAF technology, uh, the fact that we've got you know such a fantastic autofocus tracking uh, system with the, the A9, with the R Mark III, with the 7.3, all of our recent uh, announcements. So it's, it's all about fast moving. I'm not sure why that also involves loudness, but yeah, it's all about speed. I quite like it. Thank you very much. No worries. <laughs> Drones. 
Hi DJI. Um, and you know we'd be here. <laughs> I don't even know why. Um, anything that has taken your fancy? I know we're standing right by the Mavic 2 Pro, but yep. anything else? Well, the Mavic 2 Pro is fantastic. They've got it in a big cage here, so they're obviously flying it around, showing everyone. They've also got loads of other stuff here, so we can go and have a look if you like. Let's go. So we're here by the Ronin S stand. Um, it's a perfect gimbal for DSLRs, mirrorless cameras. It's weighted up to three and a half kilograms, so it's really going for the amateur to kind of a small pro studio kind of feel to it. Um, they've got a load on display today, so yeah, so we've, we've had a play with it before. Obviously, we've got our own, but um, it's good to speak to the guys from DJI and see what they have to say about it. It looks pretty nifty. It is pretty nifty. Over here we've got DJI's prosumer range, um, so including the Inspire 2, the Ronin 2, and all of their force um, accessories that go along with it. Uh, really, really interesting stuff, allowing you to get really, really cool shots. The force is what really took my fancy. It's uh, got three kilometers range, so you can control any of the Ronins, um, including the Ronin S and the Ronin 2, all from up to three kilometers away, which is fantastic. But here we've got the Inspire 2, along with the, uh, the X7 lens on, on the bottom and uh, really, really looking towards the prosumer side over on this side of the uh, display. So I'm here with my friend G, he works for DJI, um, and we're just going to have a quick look at the, some of the prosumer models that they have in today. So what's this, G? So that's the Force Pro. Um, for most gimbal, gimbals right now, um, they're delivered with a joystick. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the joysticks are good, but not perfect for each situation. Okay. Um, and the thing is, what cameramen want is flexibility because you're not going to film a football match like you're filming uh, an action movie, like you're filming a fashion show. Mm -hmm. um, so for each situation, we're trying to offer tools that offer you the maximum f flexibility you need. I've noticed that across the DJI range, whatever, you're just trying to allow creativity. for the Exactly. We, we, we can't have like a T model, uh, one for everyone. It's like each situation has its own requirements. Brilliant. Um, so here it's the Force Pro, mm -hmm. um, so it's just this box. What it does is it's going to mirror your uh, movements. So now it's put on a tripod, but you can put it pretty much wherever you want, on a handle bar, mm -hmm. um, here on a tripod, um, I don't know, on a helmet, for example. Really? And then it's going to completely mirror what you're doing. Can I have a go? Yeah, of course. So what kind of range does this thing have? You get up to three kilometers range. Um, it's 1.5 <laughs> in Europe because of signal limitation. Oh, yeah, because the frequencies. Okay, exactly. That's brilliant. And does that work for all the Ronins? It works with Ronin 2, oh. Ronin S, and uh, Inspire 2. Inspire 2 as well. Yeah. So for the camera. So the cool thing is that one cameraman can use the same device and have the same feel across ground and uh, air solutions. Aerial That's incredible. Solutions. It's incredible. Oh, that's fantastic, G. So that's the end of day one. I know. <laughs> we have barely oh, made a oh. dent. Uh, what was your favorite thing today? Um, I'm going to have to say the actually getting to touch and feel the Panasonic S1 R. Oh, that for me, highlight of the day. I know it was first thing this morning, but highlight. No, I loved it. Um, really looking forward to seeing that uh, that 10 to 25 mil lens f 1.7 through that wide range. It's just going to be fantastic. Um, and I really enjoyed actually getting my first hands on with the EOS R uh, and just kind of wandering around. We saw a lot of people that we haven't seen in a while, um, and we get to sort of make our plans. Um, who are we seeing tomorrow? Um, well, we've got still some major players to see tomorrow, haven't we? So Fujifilm, yep. uh, Nikon as well, oh, and yeah. we had a sneak peek earlier, but yeah, can't well, wait to... some, something, something about robot cameras. <laughs> Just draws you in. Uh, yeah, no, I, I think I'm sold even on that. Um, GoPro? Yeah. GoPro, yeah, definitely looking forward to getting Hero my first hands on with, the, with mm. uh, Hero 7s. Uh, it's going to be great. Um, yeah, and probably a, a whole bunch of other people. Um, <laughs> So, I hope you've enjoyed this video, and uh, if you have, uh, give us a like and comment below what your favourite part uh, of what we've done on day one is, and anything you're looking forward to. And uh, we shall see you tomorrow. Right, uh, dinner, I think. <laughs>